Dr. Courtney Bridgman with the San Antonio Humane Society. I'm the Chief Veterinarian here. I'm here today with Chelsea Arch. She's our foster care coordinator. It's her job to make sure that all the animals that aren't quite ready for adoption, um, for whatever the reason, get out to home so that they can get ready and come back find their forever homes. So Chelsea is going to talk to us today about raising neonatal puppies. These guys are newborns. Um, Chelsea, can you tell me a little about our, our friends here? Well, these guys are uh, brand new babies. They were born yesterday, and unfortunately their mother's not able to take care of them, which is where um, we step in and try and find to find a foster family that can assist in taking care of them. Um, at this age, it's very, very important to keep them warm, well-fed, and also assist in um, having them go to the restroom every two hours. So um, we've got rice socks that we're using to ensure that they stay warm enough. Um, we're using canine milk replacer to supplement them and, and feed them every two hours. Um, at this age, they're getting about, what, 15 ounces? Approximately every, for this size puppy. For this size puppy every two hours. And um, that'll gradually change as they get larger. The intervals between how um, long it'll be between feedings will change um, and the amount of food of course will change. So um, right now we're focusing on getting them through this first week which is really important, um, making sure to keep those rice stocks to keep them warm, getting them fed as much as they need to and we also use the um, water and, uh, and tissues to stimulate them to use the restroom much like their mother would um, stimulate them if she were able to take care of them. Yeah, all of those things that um, Chelsea was talking about are incredibly important for these guys. One of the other things that um, any potential foster family would do for us is weigh them daily. Um, when they don't have a mom, when, when babies have a mom, we'll tell foster parents, you know, just leave them alone as much as possible at this age. Let mom take care of them. She does the whole thing. But when they're this size, um, it's important that they get a lot of sleep. They're just like newborn children. So it's, uh, it's important they get a lot of sleep, but it's also important that they feel loved and, and that there's some affection there. So, um, you know, it, we don't want them held all the time because that also is pretty stressful for a newborn puppy. But when you take them out to feed them, you should, you should do what um, Chelsea's doing, and it stimulates licking by the mom. So the puppy is getting the affection that it um, would from its mother. Um, it's also very important to hold them in the proper positioning while they're being fed. Um, as you guys probably saw in the video or that um, Chelsea was demonstrating, yeah. you don't want to do what we do for our babies and, and flip them onto their back and try to feed them that way or even really pick their head up into the air, which some puppies kind of seem to like. Um, that predisposes them to aspiration, which means inhaling the milk, which can honestly be very, very detrimental to their health. Um, these kinds of noises are actually really good noises. They mean that the puppy is vigorous and a, bite, a fighter. It does mean that he's particularly unhappy because he is a little bit hungry and you can see that by him searching. Um, puppies will tell you when they're hungry, when they're cold, um, when, they're, when they need to go potty. Um, so you have to just uh, kind of learn what that sounds like. So the noises he's making is, where is my food? Um, if you had just fed him and you put him back in his kennel and he doesn't immediately go to sleep and he starts like trying to burrow, that might mean he's cold. Um, the rice socks um, actually can hold heat for a good long time and create something the puppies can couple against. Yeah. And it's really important to keep them warm so that they can also digest their food properly. Absolutely. And, and consistently have the, the bowel movements and everything. So everything, everything keeps functioning um, and without that, that extra warmth, um, there's potential for, for it to be pretty, oh, yeah. pretty one of, devastating. One of the leading causes of, of neonatal death in both puppies and kittens is draft, is failure to stay warm. So, um, you know, people think, you know, they've got the, the heating pad. Well, the heating pad turns off after a certain length of time. Um, if it's that kind of heating pad and suddenly the puppies are cold. Um, and like Chelsea was saying, they don't digest things as well. They're not able to maintain their whole body temperature, which um, you know reduces their ability to basically stay alive. And at this range, that's very, very important. They're so small that um, even a drop of just a degree or two could be deadly for them. Great. And um, one of the great things about our agency is we're able to provide everything that these little guys need to go into their foster home. So um, any sort of milk replacer, bottles, heating pads, rice socks, bedding, um, and also support. There is 
a 24-hour line where um, myself can I can be reached at. So if there is an emergency or a question regarding one of these little guys that's that's really uh, needing a lot of attention, I'm always available to answer those questions.